future of military aviation seems locked down in the Tempest and NGAD efforts at the moment. But it is never too early for nations like Russia, China, or the US. The future is always around the corner, so we can always expect something new. Sometimes it will be small steps forward, while other times, it will be great leaps ahead. With military hardware, we've really reached a point where most of the advances are evolutionary, building on past successes and proven features rather than revolutionary, which could take designers in an entirely new direction. Such is the case with the B-21 Raider, which is now in development. It is mainly building on the successes of the B-2 Spirit, and both feature a flying wing design. Likewise, most 6th generation fighter designs have focused on what worked with 5th generation aircraft and have taken it much further. The question then is what we can expect with the next generation, beyond what is already in the prototype stage. Yet, even aviation experts can only ponder what we could expect to see. To be honest, I've not really heard anyone even mention 7th generation, explained Gareth Jennings, aviation editor of Chains. Most, tier 2 feet nations that are building aircraft, Turkey, South Korea, etc. are building their own 5th generation jets, while tier 1 nations, US, UK, and partners, France, and partners, are looking at 6th generation. 7th generation isn't really a thing, as yet, added Jennings. That said, it is possible to look at the progression of previous generations and extrapolate that forward to take an educated stab at what might be features in a 7th generation jet. However, Jennings further continued that even our concept of the generations of such wasn't set in stone. In fact, until the development of today's most modern fighters, there was no talk of a particular aircraft falling into a particular generation. It's important to first note that, generations, don't really exist, they have only come into being as a way of classifying aircraft since Lockheed Martin used the term, fifth generation, to describe its F-35, and all older aircraft were kind of backfilled into what previous generation they were determined to best fit. So the F-4 became a third generation aircraft, and the Eurofighter a fourth generation aircraft, etc., said Jennings. Lockheed Martin will readily admit that it was a marketing gimmick to make their product stand out, but it has stuck and is now in widespread use. Even though the designations were actually only retroactively created, the US Air Force has since broken down the respective capabilities of the generational designations. Second generation, swept wings, range-finding radar, and infrared guided missiles. Third generation, supersonic flight, pulse radar, and missiles that can engage opponents from beyond visual range. Fourth generation, high levels of agility, some degree of sensor fusion, pulse Doppler radar, reduced radar signature, fly-by-wire, look-down, shoot-down missiles, and more. So the thing about generations is that each new generation focuses on a number of key performance attributes while retaining the key performance attributes that define the generations before it, Jennings suggested. As an example, the third generation F-4 Phantom retained the supersonic speed that largely defined the previous generation, but added to that advanced, for its day, mission computing and guided missiles. In addition, the fourth generation aircraft then took all of this and added fly-by-wire and advanced avionics, whilst the fifth generation took all of this and added stealth, sensor fusion, and supercruise, Jennings noted. The sixth generation will take this and add capabilities that haven't yet been publicly defined, but which are understood to include flexible payloads, an adaptable airframe, long-range sensing, analytics and computing, laser-directed energy weapons, advanced materials, intelligent maintenance, dynamically reconfigurable architecture, cyber protection, manned-unmanned teaming, MUM-T, trusted artificial intelligence, AI, reasoning, airspace integration, 
hypersonic propulsion technologies, space technologies, and a future wearable cockpit, he further explained. Added to these technological attributes, the sixth generation is designed to be affordable and to utilize futuristic manufacturing processes and methods, 